Okay, time to work on the exhaust system. So we got to figure out where all this crap goes here. Ah. So, this is a stock uh, muffler setup, I guess, in here. This has got those big oval slot backs to them, I guess. Wonderful. Okay, so we got two front pipes here. Choose from. Get this stuff out so you can see what it is to play with. We got one head pipe, one back pipe, another back pipe. This one has no crossover to it though. And then we have the dual dual pipe here. Alright, what else we got? These are the mufflers here. Yeah. There you go. Big ass turds. Ooh, ain't that custom. That must be the left one. This must be the right one. Okay, so that's what's going to go on the bike. We got one chromium heat shield if you want it. That'll be for the front. Okay, so we got two different lengths here, obviously. So I'm guessing this one here had issues. That one, this one looks like the only one Harley. This one here is definitely aftermarket. See how it's all one piece squish. See how this is multiple pieces welded together. This is original. Okay, this here, I don't know if it matches this one or that one. We got the heat shield obviously for it. Okay, for the back pipe, this one here is for a single exhaust. This one's for the dual. See, it's got the connection for the dual, which is this piece here. So this we're not using probably. This goes in there like this. That's how you get your dual exhaust. Now this here is for the cone motors I recall. Well, it looks like they had them on these bikes too. That's what that hole right there is for. And I'm going to find exhaust brackets that go up under here someplace. I think there's one or two on the other side of the bike you need to put on it. And these are all the different clamps they got here. And here is some hardware. I would not use, who knows. Okay, so this one here goes on this side of the bike. It's gonna sit there like this, basically. So that's a three, five sixteenths long bolt. Need something just to stick in the hole. Coarse thread would be nice. It's not exactly a long bolt. It'll work for mock-up though. Putting there a couple threads there. So I want to loosen up, I can play around with a little bit. So obviously you got some clearance issues on that. You gotta make sure that is not on top of this. So we might have to rotate this down a little bit. Or maybe we'll flip this thing around and put the cable right across the VIN number so it can screw the VIN number up. Jeez, I wonder which way we should do it. <clears throat> All right, so that's that one. Okay, obviously this goes over here. I have to clear my table off and arrange my tools so I can get to them. Can't find your tools because it's a mess. Straighten up your mess. Okay, I'm gonna guess we're using these two, but maybe not. figure out what exhaust is before we do our oil lines because we want the oil lines going right through the exhaust pipe. That would be a bad problem. And right off the bat you see where this oil line is at and where these exhaust is at. It's blowing right into the system we don't want it to be at. So there might be some issues with the location of that. I'm already seeing some fitment issues. Adjustable. Okay, let me get this piece here. All right, this one here we don't need. So we'll throw it in there. What the hell is that? A double wall or a weld on extension? What the hell? That is a really 
cobbled up mess there. Why would they cut it like that? Fold it. Oh, who knows? It's custom. It's just custom stuff here. Don't ask anything about how it's made. It's just custom. Okay, so now you gotta get all this in here before you do this because an S pipe has to go in through here. Underneath that. Right through there like this. And like that. Look how nice that stock pipe fits in there. Almost like it's made for it. I like stock parts, they fit nice. And look how much more flow that has through it. And this piece of crap here, which is squished flat. Look how crappy that flow is. Talk about lack of horsepower. Versus, ooh, it's got an airflow through it. It's still squished, but not a lot. Mainly on the bottom. You can open that part up pretty easily. Worth a lot of horsepower when you open these things up because they are restricted as hell. That's the market pipe. That might fit. There's our two brackets. There's a line hanging away here. Figure out which bracket goes where. Okay, so we get to figure out all this. Okay, now the next thing you have to figure out is a head pipe. Right here is going to dictate how long the system is. So it goes up in the pipe this way. It does not want to go in that head. You don't suppose somebody welded that thing off and made it tight, do you? It looks like the right size. Yeah, that looks like the one I welded up. Yep, it's stock size, so it doesn't fit. Put that right there, put that to there, and then see how far that thing moved back. That's more it's going to slide on. Alright. So we'll take this one out. Put this one in, it's whole place. Right there is where it sits. Let's see how this one fits up in here. Right there, and it looks like that one will actually squeeze into there. So I'm guessing these two pieces here fit together, not with that one over there. All right, so let's see if that's actually true here. It'll take two hands to do this job, though. All right. First thing is you gotta make sure the pipes fit together. Something that looks like that, it probably does not fit together very well. So, we gotta get that piece bent out a little bit. So we'll just take our duckbill pliers here, also known as a flat nose plier. That's bent over. That actually needs to have a channel lock put on there and roll it back. Here, channel locks here. You gotta try to roll that back up somehow. Sticking down, now I rolled it up instead of just more up. Usually, I do. I put a piece of metal in here and make the stuff correct. Just kind of roughing it out right there. We'll do a better job here if it works. 
Okay. Here just does not want to fit in there. There it goes. Doesn't go that angle. It goes this angle here. Okay. Appears to be all the way in. See how it doesn't quite fit over here. See, rolls around us. Okay. Okay, that's all the way in. Alright, where's my felt tip now? So I like to grab my felt tip now. Come over and put a line right here. So I know how far it can go maximum. Now we can take it apart, kind of. <sighs> you can see it went in that deep. Jeez. Never seen one go in there that far before. That's a long ways in. Okay. Yeah, you can see the mark on the inside there. It went in really far. Well, they'll never go in that far when it's running, I know that. Okay, this is nice and loose here. So this, this is going to rattle. So there's no way of riveting this anymore. So you have to just get in and weld it. It's pretty much going to leak all around the whole thing. So if you don't weld it all the way around the whole thing, it's going to still leak. The problem if you weld all the way around the whole thing, the whole piece will break out at some point. But oh well. If you ever do it now or do it later. So you might just weld all the way around the whole thing and live with it. Okay, let's see if this works. Right there. A long bolt here to use to cut a semi hole where it belongs. Okay, let's see if we can get this head pipe here to go up of where it belongs, up in the front up here. There's a gasket on here, you can not even see the damn thing. I think it's one of those copper ones. Try to get it off somehow. It's a gasket. You bend it off, right? I'm thinking this one was on there pretty good. These are the ones you used to buy at the swap meets. It's the only place you could buy them. I finally found a source for them after 20 years. <laughs> Not a swap meet though. All right. I think they had it in upside down. This side's supposed to be on the upper side to seal against the head, not the pipe. Makes it going hard too. This is the James gasket here. It's not copper though, the whole thing. So it goes like this. There, it'd be a miracle if that didn't leak. We know it will. It's a Harley, it's gonna leak. Okay, pipe feels round. Let's see if we can get to go in the head. Pipe here. There we go. Yeah, that's a good fit, I like that. That is a nice fit. Jeez, that is nice. Oh, that fit in there like it was made for it. Went in there nice and tight in the head, nice and tight in the pipe. It went in about halfway, which is all you can expect about that. You know, it's about here right now. That's a good fit. The angles are good, fit right in. This hole lines up over here pretty nicely. 
goes like that, be perfect. You can beat that whole din out of the bottom of the pipe and then make it flow. Look how much room is up under there. I can also put my whole damn finger up under there. I don't know if you can see in that area. It's all up under here where my finger is. Come on, White, stay on. See a big gap up under here? You can take that big dent out of the pipe right there and make it flow a lot better. Okay, I'm liking that. That looks nice. What I'm not liking is all of this over here. This I'm not liking. Okay, this is going to have to go down like this, I'm guessing. This is going downhill. bolt to hold the pot hose down out of the way. So I think it's going to go way the hell over here. Okay, where's that other pot? Oh, this had that same copper gasket on it. Look at that. I think I just came off the same bike. Put on backwards too, just like the other one. You don't suppose they didn't know any better, do you? In case you wonder why how I know that is because when you make the head on the port, you actually have a receiver in there for that chamfer piece to go in there. You know, there's actually a receiver in the head that that goes into. We didn't need that, did we? All right, we're not using that one now either. Yeah, we've got another one. Look at that. Okay, now we're gonna see if this fits in here at all. Goes into there. Goes into there. Pull my bolt out. And it goes in there. Put my bolt back in there. in there good. It looks like it fits. Pretty nice fitting exhaust. I'm surprised. Okay, so everything looks like it fits in there like it's supposed to. That exact uh, oil line is going to get kind of crispy. Yeah, there's a gap up in there now, but boy, it is not really. My fingers are, uh, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, tight finger. Yeah, my, not quite that much room. Of course, the oil line is the same size as my finger. So there's not enough room to go in a normal spot. You could probably put one line against the frame over there. Maybe. Let's see here. Short piece of hose. There's a short piece of hose. Yeah, right through there, that spot. There's no room. Yeah, that's the spot. Yeah, there's no room in there. Look at that. It doesn't want to fit. There it goes. There. Perfect. Okay, that'll, uh, that's got good air gap. Okay, that would work. That goes up top of the tank up in here. Right there. We can use that for the return line over to here. We'll go right to this spot here. It'd be a hell of a bend though. Jeez. Have to rotate that back a little bit to make it line up better. That's the last thing you want to do with that is back it up. Okay, that'll be a good fitment there. You got good clearance for the exhaust. When the vent line comes out of here, we'll just run right up this other side right here. It doesn't matter if it gets a little to toasty. And the feed line, I want to keep it back over here somehow, but 
see it's past where it holds the clamp. It's rubbing up here in the tank, which is going to put a lot of hole in it. So that's not good either. Damn it. I don't really want this thing to be over here. some room under there but damn that's close that's yeah, going to be one crispy ass oil on there i really don't want that to be that close to the uh, exhaust system this is not fireproof rated hose yeah i don't like that at all i have to do something different about that so that's gonna have to go back over here and that's pretty crispy. So now we got a little bit of a little more air gap there, but it's still only got a finger and a half of clearance. Going right across that tank area. Yeah. Oh, that sucks. Okay, well. Every way it sucks that you can do it, so. But that's the better of the two. I got more room under here. Oh well, that's all you can do. At least there's a little more airflow coming through here, too, to help cool it. Get the air going off it. The return line's pretty well away. The vent line's gonna get crispy, I don't care. It's a vent line, it can get crispy. This is higher temperature hose, but it ain't that high. The rubber's still rubber, it still burns. All right, so this stuff here is not as not as high temperature rated, I don't think. All right, bad design, but oh well, have to live with it. Okay, so I think that's how we're going to root that. Uh, so this is going to have to get welded up here at some point to make it all work. So for now, we can go ahead and start the bike up and get it running with these on there. And I'll have to do some, uh, have to open this up under here, weld this up right here for sure to get more flow through that system down there. All right, so that's not too bad. I want to put studs up in here, which are right here. So these go, I think we can see it. This has a, goes way up inside the head, bottom it out preferred, and you lose it. Then you put a nut down here to hold the pipe on. That way it doesn't rattle the stud out of the head as much. So, all right, so we're going to do that too. Okay, the oil line really nearly sucks. So, uh, is there some way of holding this thing down here somehow? See, that's rubbing back there. We don't really want to rub on that. Yeah, it's just going to want to. At least it's not really sharp back there. It's it's a blunt edge, so at least it's good. <clears throat> Just want to keep it off this damn pipe as much as we can. All right, definitely not the best setup, but oh well. Okay, and this one we're going to have to rotate this back a little bit. Try to keep that line way tucked in. <clears throat> All right, we got the rooting figured out. I'm back. Looks like I hit the wrong button there. Okay, we got our rooting figured out. So let's get this all out of here. Okay, we're not using this aftermarket pipe. An aftermarket pipe gone. Is that blown up? No. Get the bolt out of here. Tight fit up there in that head. Definitely going to open this up a little bit. Okay. That thing's dangerous. Alright, so let's see. Just 
first thing to do is get this line figured out. Something I can do to make it fit over here tighter. Feed line way down here at the bottom. So I naturally want to bend up into the pipe. So the more I force it back, the more it wants to dimple. So you watch how I work the line here. I'm going to try to keep it down and tug to, hug the tranny. So if you put it right here, it's not too bad. If you push it back like that to get it more room for the hose down here, it pushes it right up here into the pipe, which is what we don't want to do. This strap is way too short to reach all the way over to hold it back. So that's not going to happen, unless we bend the strap straight out, which I might do. Try to get a little more length out of it. I don't know. I don't think I'm really even going to use the strap at all. Okay, so I'm going to cut this thing right down here. Hopefully that's not too short. It's only short if it's too long, but if it's too short, you're screwed. Let's get another hose. <laughs> Okay. All right. Here's the first one. Get our hose clamp here. Put the clamp on top. Anything down there? To get to? Yeah, we should be free. Let's just put a little bit of grease on there, oil or something. What do we got around here to use? Put a little grease on it down there to help it slip on a little easier. Okay. Now you got a natural curve in the hose. Make sure you're taking advantage of that to be this direction. So this is the direction we're going to put it on. Clamps are already fighting me. Let's get the clamp out of the way. Loosen it up. Okay. <clears throat> Make sure I'm not cutting the hose. Looks like I'm trying to cut the hose off there. I'm going to be doing that. So let's open the hose up a little bit. Try to anyway. Preformed a little bit. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to use this to pry it in there. Shove it in. A little leverage. There. Yeah, it's a little. Length is good if I just keep it, put this bracket a little bit longer over here, it would help hold it better. So we're going to do that. Just clamp over here. I put the clamp on the top side of the line where you can see it. You can also get to it if you need to. If you go on the bottom, I think an exhaust might be in the way a little bit. So I want to put it on top. Usually I try to put them on the bottom where you don't see them, but in this case, I think it's a better spot is up here. Okay. All right. So that's how that looks. Feet over there in the way. So like I said, this needs to be just kind of held like right there. That's where it needs to be held to. And you see I can come by and catch it, but not with this hook on the end of it. I gotta get rid of this hook. And I think that the angle's alright, it's just a hook and it's gotta go. So I'm gonna have to take this off and knock this out here a little bit. 
Might be able to do it on the bike here with a crescent wrench, but easier just take it off. Take it out of there. A lot easier. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this off. A quarter inch wrap up in here. Fits good. Relatively good. Simple oil line installation and it isn't that simple if you do it correctly. You have to look at all your options, what you're doing. Okay, we're going to get rid of this here a little bit. So we're going to knock this down a little bit with a hammer. Like this. So over here i got this nice steel table right here, cast iron table. This isn't going anywhere when you beat on it. Okay. So might put a mark on it though. Not the table. There you go. Let's put a mark on my table too. Look at that. It's not going to rust off. Look at that. Okay, a little bit of a curve, but not. Ah. I don't want that sticking in that hard. Ah. It stings my finger when I do that. Yeah, that's good. You got a little bit of a curve to it, but not much. Okay, let's come over here and see how it looks. Bad at all. I guess you can't see it. Camera's in the wrong spot. There you go. Okay, so take a little bit more of a twist on that will be better, but I can do that with a crescent wrench over in the bike. Okay, I'm thinking that's going to be pretty good. Okay, we'll go ahead and put this back on there. Had a little bit of Loctite on this before. So re Loctite it. adjustment on this here. Go up a little bit. A little bit more. Digging in more in here than the top. So a little bit more of a twist to it. So just pull this out a little bit. Get a little bit more right on the tip there we want it. Push it in. Perfect. Okay, so now it goes right in there pretty tight. It looks it's a little bit tighter on the bottom of the top. You can't see in there, but it'll push in there real nice. It's up against the derby or the ratchet lid right here back here, so it's holding in nice. The vacuum line is under it, or the vent line now. And the clutch arm is way in the back there. I don't know if you can see in there, it's way back there, so it's away from the line. So we have to worry about the lever getting against it all. Plenty of room. Okay, so that looks good. We still got room for the other hose to come right through here, so I'm happy with this. I'll go ahead and tighten that down right in that spot. Get the lock set up. And make sure you don't squeeze the line when you tighten this. Pinch it in half. Okay, that's tight. 
oil line's got drag on it, but it's not hurting it any. So now we're tucked in nice and clean here. We're not quite against the case, but it's right next to it. And we're all tight. The only disadvantage is right now, I got the bolt hole here. It should have been a little bit longer on the line. Now that I got held here, I could have made it longer. I didn't, I didn't think ahead enough on the bolt down here. So we're right up against the bolt head there. So maybe if we move this bracket out a little bit, we'll... That. I have a bolt head in there not get into my hose. Yeah, a little bit, another quarter inch more length, that would have been good. Oh well. I could have been a half inch longer now that I got this held in correctly. It could have made a lot more of a loop. But oh well, you don't know until you make it. It'll work. Okay, now I gotta do this other one here. So I gotta get the, I gotta rotate this back a little bit to come in over in this direction here. That is a 5 ace, 11 sixteenths, 5 ace. Yep. Still got drag on it, so I'm alright with the fitting. Okay, that'll come in from that angle there. That's a good angle there. Coming through there. Okay. Just go down a little deeper. Okay. Get this up on your old tank up on high. Now we're going way up here under the seat here. be called a universal universal seat stop there all right okay so get all the way over to here now with this hose right here like this so stick it right there and a clamp on that clamps always going to be on the top stuff. here. Put a little squeeze on it. Mm. Oh, I think it's pregnant up there. All right. It doesn't appear to want to go on any further. Those clamps, I use a quarter drive ratchet, works really good on this stuff. Makes it real easy to get to. Okay, 
tighten them up pretty good. You can break them easily if you want. <laughs> All right, I got go a little. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. Don't be too close. This lid is going to already get you anyway, but. Yeah, I can go a little closer. There you go. So 16s make a difference? Yeah, it does. Okay, now we know we're definitely on top of the nipple real good. Okay, I rotate this down a little bit. Find a good spot for that. And there's another hose going across there. This has a pre curved bend going in here right now. See, it wants to go that way already, naturally, down here. So we're taking advantage of the natural bend in the line to go right into our fitting pretty close. Still got to twist a little bit, but it goes in there pretty good. So this one here, we're going to be about this long. Just want to make sure I got enough extra in there to not be a problem. Got some room in there if we need to go further. Okay. Put that thing right there. Just the right amount of grease. All right. I figure we want this to be right going forward here, right there, nice and clean. When you stick it way out the back where you're trying to clean the bike, it rakes your fingers. I like it going forward nice and clean. Okay, put your duck bills on there. More on it. We'll come back and flatten the hose the other way. Okay. To clamp to go over the fitting. make it go. All right. We're right up against that nut there. There we go. Nice and tight. Nice and clean. You can clean your bike up and not rake your knuckles and everything on these fittings. You hardly even know the clamp's even there because it's right up against the nut here. So you can, you know, it looks nice and clean. I have a bunch of crap sticking out in the wind. Little details matter. Okay. I can pull that hose down a little bit more, put a little curve in it. We're fine. Okay, we got decent clearance back here. This is going to be up a little higher. So we got good clearance on this back here for 
for heat. So it shouldn't have any problem with the return line. Now the vent line is going to come right across here, which is going to be the hot spot. So it's going to come right up underneath here and it's going to get roasted. So we might have to go maybe right through here like this a little bit would help. But it's still going to be close. Okay, where's my good hose at? This stuff should be good for a few years. That stuff you get in aisles, so the rubber's so crappy, at six months it looks like it's 20 years old. It's all corroded and cracked and starts leaking. I've had hoses leaking under a year old on a bike. Not even ridden every day either, just sitting around garages. I still take a crap. Okay, so this one we're going to have to get all the way down to here. So I'm going to come up through here. Yeah, I guess I could have put the hose. We didn't see the super shop on it, but yeah, well. I didn't think about that part. I was more concerned about the rotation of what the hose was. Yeah, well. Hey, I'm not into cosmetics and that part, and the cosmetics and fitment is what I care about. Okay, this hose wants to bend this way, so we're going to bend it this way. It's going to be the opposite on the top. It's fighting to bend on the top. But I'm good with that. Okay. A little extra hose. So I'm work on to get it in there. Okay, we're going up real high again. So now we've got to jam it on this fitting right up in here. Make it hard. And grease back over here. Ooh, they're all gooey. Okay, a little bit of grease around that. Can't get under there. Can't get under very well. Okay, this one here, I'm going to have the clamp on the top here like that, so it goes on this direction. Let's open the clamp up a little bit right now. Okay, where are we at? Okay, we want that on the top, that angle. Got it. Swedge this open a little bit. It's actually important doing this. Makes it go together a lot easier. Okay. As much as Tetra butt power is going to do, now we're going to use wrenches. Leverage. Completely off the hose. I know I was turning up so much. Dumbass. It's hard to get good help, I tell you. It comes from experience. Oh, 
thought either. Go a little bit further. Right there, I like. Tight. Too, but it's on there <clears throat> so it's in there pretty good so you can see I went off I was over here on this part here doesn't do much for you so the nipple went right to here so I'm still on the hose so I'm all right I was trying to get a little bit closer to the edge but yeah, that'll be fine this one's good too over here okay so I gotta bend this around get this coming down here we want to go we'll go right to here at least that's where we're trying to go to. We'll see how that works. Okay, bend that around. Okay, make sure you have a little extra on there. The natural bend of the hose is helping us. And we're going to go to about, if I put a little extra pressure on that, it should tuck it in a little bit lower, which will help us on this one. Go right here. So only the bottom one I'm cutting too short. Cut that way, cut this way. Yeah. All right. side maybe. Yeah, we're too long. Yeah, we're about a half inch longer it needs to be. It'd be good if we were down here. We're not down here. Well, could use that a half inch on the bottom, but oh well. Okay, that looks a lot better. I can live with that one. Okay, another clamp. Okay, this one here we're going to put on the underneath so you don't have to look at it. Now these are all stainless clamps, including the screw. So they won't rust. They'll still get dirty and ugly though. Okay, move on there. Take the hose, it tucks it in a little bit more. Get on there. Okay. Force it to go that direction. Yeah, clamps on one direction. Natural curve is slightly off on what we're trying to do here. The natural curve is uh, keeping this out up here, which is keeping it out down here instead of being tucked in tight. As I twist this, see how it moves the hose up top like that. So 
The only way I can fix that is I can come up here and loosen this up here, let it free spin a little bit. And this one I gotta move the clamp up a little bit so I can rotate it and get it, get it to tuck in tight. Right now I don't like how it's right there. It's probably all right there, but I can get it better. top so we loosened up on the top up here now too as opposed to take a twist out of itself so it don't actually twist around ah, damn it and it's not really doing what I want it to do either way just doesn't want to not take the twist out. Oh well. Tried. All you can do is try. Yeah. Made no difference. I think it got worse. Should have got better, but yeah. That helped. Shoved the hose down a little bit. A little more pressure on it. That changed how it works. Now it's laying where I want it to. Perfect. Dipped it lower and everything. See, so now it's a. Uh, I just slid it down about a quarter inch up in here. It dropped the hose down. Now it's staying in there more. A little bit lower through here, so definitely a lot of pipe clearance this way also. We already had enough there anyway, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so all this is nice and tucked in. Got good clearance on everything. We got maximum heat protection. Now you could put some heat material across here and really take the heat off the pipe, off the lines, but that's not stock, so we never do that. Doesn't look right. The lines would like you, but oh well. Yeah, this one's a little on the short side. It's definitely screwed that one up a little bit, but oh well. Let's see. Actually, there's a little bit of length right there. I can squeeze right there. There. There actually is more length right there available. There. Just gave myself about another quarter inch. It's still tight in there, though. It's a little short. Oh well. Next time, make it a half inch longer on the bottom. Maybe I can glue that piece in there. It's needed. Okay. At least now there's room for a nut in here and it won't be eaten on the line, so we're alright. Okay, so we got the oil lines are all in there. Uh, we got to figure out where this is going to go. We got the. Uh, the peak line in here, it's the engine vent line, otherwise known as a breather line. I run out of crap in the brackets back here and tuck it in underneath so it stays in the back. As long as you blow it straight back or slightly to an angle out, it won't get all over your bike. And underneath the bike will be dry. There won't be any oil up under here. If you just blow it right down to here, it blows all over the whole bike underneath. It also comes up and get all over the oil tank up under here because it just goes like this in a big circle under the bike. So if you want to keep the oil off the bike, get the damn puke line away from the bike. That's why you make it real long going that way. Okay, so. Figure out the exhaust system, I guess, next. All right, let me uh, get this clean up a little bit, and I'll be right back.